All right, so this could be a painful time of year. If you are shy, that's a world that's got to be I'm mean, so secluded. Sometimes you feel like you're on your own island because you're. it's just – anxiety ridden when you're out all the time right i was about to say i bet you just feel like it, just full of anxiety all the time especially when in public places and trying to interact and being social mm-hmm. that has to be just you just it's have gotta to be suck. so anxious it really does none of us i don't believe in here have any kind of shine you have any kind of shyness jeff uh yes uh, no i think radio people are a little socially awkward though yeah mm-hmm. for sure you guys are i think we yeah right <laughs> um so sean wheeler is our uh hypnotist and he's kind of a relationship hypnotist, right? Explain to um, the new Burke Show listener exactly what it is you do. Well, um, you know, I, after I got on the Burke Show initially all those years ago, I started getting a lot of people that had, had never heard about what I could do before. And I got a lot of people that came to me for help with relationship stuff. And I found that I had a lot of success with them for anything from divorce and, you know, uh, getting over a painful breakup to things like shyness and, you know, lacking courage and confidence in dating and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, since then, I've, I've kind of developed this moniker of being known as the heartbreak hypnotist. Now, I would think like being shy is part of, for the most part, as a generalization, is not like part of your DNA? I mean, how do you change somebody's DNA in, in hypnosis? I have an awesome story for that because, okay. you know, here I am and I'm this, you know, hypnotist guy and I've got all these clients and I'm on the Burt Show and people probably wouldn't believe how shy I used to be. And 15 years ago, when I first moved to Atlanta, I was working at CNN and there was a girl in my department who I was, I really had the hots for, really cute girl, wanted to talk to her, wanted to ask her out. Two years I was in this department with her and I couldn't get the courage to ask her out. What's her name, Robin Mead? <laughs> no, it was, in, it was in the sports department. Okay. So, you know, all these years passed by. She left the department, I left the department, never saw her again. Um, and during the interim, over the course of the next 10 years, I got hypnotized, I gained self-confidence, um, I became sort of a different version of me. 10 years later, I bump into her at a concert. I start talking to her without even thinking about it. Three years later, she's my wife. And we're expecting oh. our first child in July. Shut up. Oh, really? Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Really? Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, and it, it's it's night and day. I mean, it was the old Sean versus the new Sean. The old Sean had no self-confidence, hadn't dated in like six years uh, since a breakup that I went through in college. And the new Sean was like comfortable with himself. And because I was comfortable, I was myself. I talked to her. We hit it off. So how many hypnosis how, helped you break through that barrier? How many years was Absolutely. it before you worked with her and ran into her? Ten years it was around. 10 years after I'd seen her. Yeah, it was Man. 10 years later. If you just made the move back at CNN, she would have been with all those guys in that <laughs> decade. Right, <Which> right. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. She's listening right now. I appreciate that. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, That's awesome. Congratulations on the baby. Thank you. Thank you. Is it counterproductive to ask painfully shy people to call a radio station <laughs> to get help? You know, I don't, th- <laughs> I don't, I don't think, think so <laughs> because I think, honestly, it's so painful that I think that they'd be willing to reach out for that kind of help. I mean, when I went to see my hypnotist for the first time, you know, I wasn't really going for shyness. I was going for some other stuff, but he sensed that right away. And it was something that I just clicked with. You know, two, two weeks after my first session, and this is after, I, you know, I, when my wife was no longer in the picture, but two weeks after this, after not dating for six years, I met a girl and talked to her like nothing, and we dated for a year, you know? I, and it wasn't the one for me, but it was a clear example of I just, my mindset had changed. I'd love to um, try to help one of you guys out if you're painfully shy. And every time we talk about this subject, and we get a ton of email and tweets about it, they're so, the percentage of, sh- painfully shy people in the world is really, really high, really high. We want to help one of you guys out. So give us a call right now, one eight five five Burke show And Valentine's Day, I would think, would be like the lowest day for a painfully shy person. Yeah, it is. It's the it's the one day when it's all brought to fruition. You see everyone else celebrating. It's on all the commercials. Everyone's going out to the nice restaurants. And if you've been through a breakup or you haven't dated in a long time, it's the worst case of looking in the mirror and seeing how lousy things are for you. So what what do you tap into initially for a painfully shy person? It's the is it the thought of failing? Is it the thought of ju- someone else is judging you and you're not going to be accepted and you try to change that? Yes, it's a combination of fear of rejection and lack of self esteem, poor self esteem or lack of self confidence. I notice this recurring theme. Almost all the relationship issues I work on have something really strongly to do with self esteem. Meaning, if you think that you're an awesome person and you walk up to somebody and talk to them, then you're confident, you know. But if you think that you have all these flaws that are going to be exposed, you don't want to talk to somebody. If you're anticipating getting rejected, why even bother? Right. 
you know, there's this really, this is actually a really funny story. When I was lacking in confidence, I was in, I was in Chicago one time with a group of classmates, went to Wrigley Field for the ball game, but it was like 17 degrees. We walk over the street to the bar across the street. And before I could even get my coat off, this girl I'd never seen before just comes up and starts dancing right in my face. And did you just panic without even thinking about it? I looked, I looked at her and I said, what are you drunk? (laughs) And she stopped dancing. Mm -hmm. She looked me right in the eye and she said, no. And then she walked away. And I didn't, I didn't know it at the time what had happened, but in retrospect, what I realized was that the reason I said that was that in my reality, that was the only explanation mm-hmm. for why she would have done that, that she was so drunk that she couldn't recognize how worthless I was. Mm-hmm. That was my perception at that time. So when you have that perception that you're worthless, that you're no good, that you're not good enough, then you don't want to talk to anybody because you think they're going to find out. And she is a brilliant example of someone that is not shy. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the polar opposite. The polar She needs hypnosis to be... Less <laughs> right <laughs> enthusiastic. Hey Jennifer, good morning. You're on the Burt Show. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. I know this is kind of odd to ask people that are painfully shy to call up a radio station, but that's exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah, I need help, so I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> All right. What do you mean you need help? Um, I just have a fear of rejection, so I do not approach men. Um, when you know me and my girlfriends go out. I'm the one that thinks, you know, oh, I'm not going to get talked to. Um, All my girlfriends around me will have, you know, guys approach them, buying them drinks, and I'm just like, "Mm, I'm sitting here by myself. (laughs) And is it only men, or is it women also? Is it any social atmosphere? Um, I've had the same group of friends for quite a while. I don't reach out uh, to other people, so I would, you know, assume to say it's male and female. Hmm. Where would you start, John? Uh, I would start with her feelings about herself. You know, if she's anticipating rejection, that means that her focus is on her flaws more so than it is on her positive qualities. And you, focus is an interesting thing because you can be aware that you're a good person and that you're fun and that people like you if they get to know you. But if you're not aware of that at the time that you're meeting somebody new, then it's off. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be – I help people to direct their consciousness and their attention towards what's good about me. And when you're focused on that, you feel better. Is it possible to be shy in particular areas of your life and not in all areas? Oh, definitely. In fact, you know, I, when I used to be a really shy guy, I mean, I also was a very funny guy once I got to know everybody. Like when I was at the bar, at the table, I could cut cut people up and I could make them laugh. But if it was anyone new mm-hmm. and I was worried about judgment and making an impression, I was I would clam up. That sound like you, Jennifer? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you think you could use Sean's help? I would love to. All right, you think you can help her I'd out? be happy to help you. I know just where to start. All right, Jennifer, hold on awesome. a second, okay? All right, Thanks. who else would be listening right now that is having a problem in a relationship that you could willingly help out? What kind of a situation, yeah. you mean? Well, I think, you know, what I've worked with quite a bit is uh, getting over a bad relationship, being dumped, being cheated on, getting over that hurt. And, again, it all comes down to self-esteem and what people are willing to put up with. You know, if you love yourself and you respect yourself, you kind of get over those things more quickly because you expect to find somebody right, new. Right. If that works for Jennifer, that would be the greatest prize that we have ever given away in the yeah, history no of the Burt Show, right? <laughs> it really is. We are giving you a social life. Yeah, seriously. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate Thanks for having it. me, guys.